Hi, my name is Abby and I am second. I am Marcus and I am second. Hi, I'm Mason and I'm second. I'm Luke and I'm second. I'm Colin and I'm second. I'm Ellie and I'm second. I'm Evan and I'm second. Hi, my name is Mercedes and I am second. Hi, my name is David and I am second. I am Olivia and I am second. My name is Sean and I am second. My name is Titus and I am second. I am Conigo and I am second. I am Jackson and I am second. I am Keely and I am second. Hi, my name is Lexi and I am second. Hi, I'm Wyatt and I'm second. Hey, good morning. Man, we're so glad you guys are here. And if you're joining us on the other side of the screen, we're glad you're with us this morning as well. Uh, hey, isn't that awesome to see kids um, say, hey, man, Jesus is first, I am second. And that's God working through moms. That's God working through dads and grandmas and grandpas and guardians and foster parents. And so I want to say thanks for leading your family in a way that they get to see Jesus, man. I mean, that's awesome because of that Jesus is life, right? But this is a really big, important thing. Um, I reminded of James, where Jesus' brother, what he said is he said, um, let's not just say we love one another. Let's prove it by how we live. And so the same is true when it comes to I am second. Let's not just say that we're second. Let's prove it in how we live too, you know. And uh, we're not going to be perfect at that, but Jesus is. Let's just let him work through us and he'll take care of the rest. You know what I'm saying? All right, cool. So uh, here I'm going to start with a, a question. What is in your house that is broken? Like it broke, but you still use it. Like what is the last thing that is in your home that it broke, but for whatever reason, maybe it was too valuable or maybe it's got too good of a story, but you can't part with it. You can't get rid of it. And so you still use it. Like we all got it, but like what is your broken thing in your house? And maybe, maybe it broke and you just thought, oh, I can use it a different way. And so you use it in a different way. You've repurposed it. So on the count of three, one, two, three, here you go. You think about your broken thing, but you don't need to shout it out. Think about what's broken in your home. You still use it. Go. You guys, you got yours over here? You got your broken thing over here? You guys have it? Okay, we got a few nods. Okay, how about over here? Do you guys have your broken thing that we still use? Okay, cool. All right. I see a smile, so I know. He's like, I got mine. All right. It's fun to watch you guys talk. This is great. I had a great introverted moment here for a moment. It was, it was awesome. Do you guys have yours? You guys got your broken thing? Cool, man. Awesome. Here's what we're talking about today with like this whole I am second thing. God uses broken things. God uses broken things, and when he's first and we're second, he uses broken things and he repurposes them for his glory. Now, I brought a list of just some pictures, not a list. I brought a picture of some things that have been broken or been repurposed. And so I'll, we'll just kind of have some fun with this. Let's check out the first picture. Doors. I don't know who had this crazy, wacky idea, but I bet somebody here, I bet several of you have something like this in your house. I remember my wife asked for Christmas, hey, baby, what would you like for Christmas? I would like a broken door. <laughs> what? I want a broken door. I want an antique door. Give me an antique door because I could do something really neat with it. And let's be honest with it. Let's just be honest for a minute. This door is like way cooler right as it is than it ever was how it was, right? I mean, it's like way cooler. It's been totally repurposed. And isn't that the truth of our lives? When Christ is first and we're second, he does cooler stuff with our lives than we could ever possibly do on our own or was doing on our own. He repurposes and like people are like, that's beautiful and that's awesome. But you know what? At one time, it was broken Somebody took it off the hinges and said, this is just a piece of junk. And they gave her the old heave-ho. And somebody said, oh, no, 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 this thing's a treasure. And somebody went and paid good money for that thing. It was crazy, all right? And look at, that's what, look, well, you keep stuff because you think it's valuable. Guess what? God uses broken things. You want to know why? Because each and every one of you is valuable to the Lord. All right, let's check out my next picture. What else do we got here? I like movies as much as anybody else, but like somebody really loves Smokey and the Bandit. 
I mean, they're like, you know, baby, we can't ride in the Trans Am anymore, but we can swing in it. All right. <laughs> Dude, it's got bucket seats, man. I mean, that is awesome. Hey, come on over. We got this awesome new porch swing. I mean, how awesome could it be? No, that's pretty sweet, dude. All right. I mean, it's just cool. I mean, <laughs> wow. <laughs> it is cool. Somebody repurposed it, man. Somebody found a clunker and said, I can do something with it. All right, cool. All right, let's see the next one. This one, man, I, I love this one. Uh, not just because it's rustic and not just because there's like a tailgate of a pickup truck and a vintage license plate and all that. But, but here's what I love. I love the backstory of this. Because if you and I would have walked by that pickup truck, I would dare say, I can't say because I, I don't know for sure, but I can be in the ballpark. I bet tens of thousands of people walked by that old pickup truck and that old tailgate and said, what a piece of junk. Maybe they said, oh, that's kind of neat. But if somebody just said, man, Tens of thousands of people said, that's a piece of junk. What could that ever be? But somebody walked by that and thought, I can do something with this thing. And they cleaned it up a little bit. And I promise you, every time somebody goes to that person's house and they walk by that bench, hey, man, thanks for having us over. Hey, it's good to see you. Dude, that is a really cool bench. That is a really cool bench. This one thing that tens of thousands of people said, man, that is a complete piece of junk. People are now saying, hey, man, that, that is really cool. That is really cool. You know what? God uses broken things, and he repurposes our lives, and he does better things with them. And there can be people who say, man, I can see the brokenness in your life. I can see the junk in your life. But you know what God sees when he's first and we're second? He takes that, and he repurposes it, and he does something beautiful. And he's like, man, I can do something with that. Now, I'm going to show you one picture. I really don't want to show you this picture, but we're going to, Wilma, if we can just do this really fast. One, two, three, go. Okay, you pray, pray for whoever did that, man. Like, why would you do that? All right, okay, next picture. All right, there we go. Uh, now, I do want to show you this picture. Listen, I've never been a chandelier guy. Could care less about chandelier guys, or chandeliers. But, you know... Chip and Joe have brought me a long way. Like, I think Joe can put together a pretty cool chandelier. I was like, yeah, I wouldn't mind Joe hanging a chandelier in my house. But when I saw this, I thought, I am now a chandelier guy. Like, that is sweet. <laughs> Who said, you know, like, guys, if your wife doesn't want to go with you out into the woods and she says, why would you waste a good day out in the mountains? You say, this is why, baby, right here, man. You go look for those sheds. You can do something cool with them, man. They're cool. Just repurpose. And isn't it interesting to you how some people look at that and all they see is like junk. They see clutter. But yet there's other people who are just as rational and just as smart and they see treasures. We do that with people too. It's easy because we're all broken. Like I'm broken, you're broken, we're all broken. We're all sinful. Like we all have our blind spots. It's easy for each and every one of us to look at people and to be able to point out their brokenness. But like where we see brokenness, God sees divine potential. And as fun as I think it would be, and I do think it'd be cool to be able to see like broken, damaged things, wreckage, and do something beautiful, I, I, I think it's even cooler to be able to look past the brokenness and the surface and see what God sees, which is divine potential in each and every one of us. This week with our I Am Second series and with our I Am Second story, I'm going to show you a story of a guy who was labeled broken. He was labeled broken not from like the day he was born. He was, he was labeled broken from the minute he was born and went through most of his life feeling that way until one day he was able to see himself through the eyes of God and see himself as Jesus sees him. And God did this transforming work in his life that is powerful, it's awesome, and so I want to introduce you to uh, David Ring. And uh, with that, take it away. Born to lose. I was born dead for 18 minutes. When I was born, I was a stillborn baby. I was a dead baby. I was a blue baby. They put my body on a table in the corner and left me for dead. But it's not over until God say it's over. 
We are all eleven years old. My dad got sick. Two weeks later, my dad died with cancer of the liver. When I came along, I'm, I'm the baby of eight. And I'm not only the baby of eight. I'm a eight number one mom, baby boy. I love my mama. My mama did everything for me. She fed me, she clothed me, she bathed me, she walked with me and helped me. But one day in my life, my mom got sick when I was 14 years old. The doctor came to my family and said, your mama will never come home again. She had cancer, she had six months. At the very moment to live, I'd say, no, my mama, my mama will never abandon me. My mama told me, I, I will never leave you. I will never abandon you. But I, I got down on my knees and prayed, God, don't take mama. God, don't take mama. God, don't take mama. But in October, 1968, my mama took a last breath. And when my mama died, I didn't want to live. I wanted to die too. I didn't have one thing to live for. Everywhere I went, people made fun of me. They look at me and they point and call me every name other than my own. He said, look, the boy walked funny. Look, the boy talked funny. I went home every day and got in bed and chilled, rolling down my face, begging to die. I attempted suicide every other day for two years. Everybody gave up on me. I gave up on me. One night, I went to church. I didn't want to go to church. I've been to church, but God don't love me. If God love me, why ain't God take away my mama? If God love me, why ain't God pick on me? God don't even like me. But that night, I sat down in a church. Then I found out. One thing, I found out that God does love me. And I had a wonderful plan for my life. I found out that I'm not okay, but that's okay. God loves me just the way I am. And that night, I, I came and I gave my life to the Lord. I went back to school after that night. The student body that called me every year, name other than my own, a public school. They were so dumbfounded. They had to call together a odd good assembly to find out what changed my life. And I said, student body, I. I'm not the same anymore. I've been changed. I gave my life to God. I'm not, I don't want to die anymore. I want to live. Why? Because I got something worth living for. They voted me to be the most popular boy in the student market. I became popular where I gave my life to God. God called me to go all over the United States telling my story. They tell me I, I will never be I will never be a preacher. They say you won't ever make it. But I only been doing it 37 years. They said, nobody will invite you to their church, uh, but I have 
outspoken in over 6,000 churches. We throw away broken things, but God don't. God used broken things. They told me I will never find a wife. No one will love you. You're not good enough to be loved. But September 5th, 1981, God gave me a beautiful bride. We have been together for over 28 years. They told me I would never be a daddy, but I am not one for full time. Every time I look at my family, all I can say to God be the glory, do I think he had done. I thank God every day for taking away my mama. If God did not take away my mama, my children would not be born. If God did not allow my mama to die, I would never find a wife. God saw a dead baby, and God brought that dead baby to life. And one day I'm going to wake up, I'm going to have me a brand new body, I'm going to see my mom and my dad again. We're going to live forever. And I'm going to say to my Lord, Lord, why have you been so good to me? And I hope it will say, well done, good in favor, servant. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be loved. That's a good story, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> yeah! That's what God does. Man, we've been singing all morning, God, you're a good father. God, you're good all the time. He's good all the time. All the time, he is God is good, man. He is good. I love that. They told me I'd never been a preacher. I've only been doing it 37 years. <laughs> they told me nobody ever invite you to church to speak. I've only been to 6,000 churches. They told me I wasn't good enough, wasn't handsome enough, couldn't talk good enough, couldn't do this, couldn't do that. Never, nobody ever wanted me. I'm too broken. But we've been married 28 years. That's saying something in today's world, isn't it? Wow. Like God just, he writes a better story. And I know that we've talked about that, but man, God takes broken things. And he does miracles with them. And he uses them. He repurposes them all for his glory so that we sit there and say, only God, God, aren't you cool? It's amazing. And I love, I love the thought that he had because how many of us, if we're really honest with ourselves, could step into that man's shoes for even a second and have the guts to say, when I see God, I want to ask him a question. God, why you been so good to me? He says, God, why you been so good to me? It's amazing. It's awesome. God is good, and he takes broken things, and he uses them. He repurposes them for his glory. Man, if you go all throughout the scriptures, the thing that we have in common, man, is that we all need Jesus and that we're all loved by God. You just have all this beautiful thing, and we're going to get to a scripture here in a minute. But before we do, I just want to talk about some things we have in common with David. Uh, David Ring here. Uh, the first one is, is that we're all broken. And let me put handles on that. We're all broken. We're all liars. We're all cheaters. We're all murderers, adulterers, and the list could go on. We're all broken. And yet, what we have in common with David Ring is that God loves us. 
God loves us so much that he allowed his son Jesus to come and purchase our freedom, our lives on the cross. I mean, you think about that. You think about all the people who say, hey, man, I love you. Or all the people who say, I love you. We just water this whole idea, this, this word love down to emotion, which basically is like, hey, if I feel good about you, I'll say I love you. But if I don't, then I'll withhold it. It's crazy. Like, so let's just define love for a minute. Like God loves us so much that his son shed his blood on Calvary that's for, for our lives. He allowed his body to be broken, not for his brokenness, but for ours. Like, that's love. And so, for all of our sakes, here's what, here's what I want to do today. And as silly as elementary as this may sound to you, we're going to do it. I just want you to hear your own voice say, God loves me. So on the count of three, just say, God loves me. One, two, three. Okay, man, now just say it a little bit slower, but just as loud. God loves me. Somebody needs to hear that today. God loves me. God loves you. God loves you. We have that in common. We're all broken, and yet God loves me. He sees all of that stuff, and he still loves us. Because he can see what he can do with our lives. Here's the second thing that we have in common with David's story, or David Ring's story. Is that we all have a story to tell. Did you hear how he said, God called me to go tell my story? He talked about the broken parts of his life. Not to celebrate those, but to celebrate how God healed and redeemed and restored. We all have a broken story. So if we're going to tell a story this week, let it be that story. Let it be the, the, the story of God's goodness through Jesus Christ in our own lives. Like we've all been called to tell that story. And that story has power. Like we just watched David's story. And man, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm crying too. But we're all sitting here crying and we're like, man, God is good. You have a story that may not move somebody to tears, but you've got a story of Christ is first and your second that will have somebody say, God is good. And living in the broken world that we live in, to get somebody who may not necessarily believe in God, but be able to see him through your life and to be able to have that person say, man, God is good, that's a miracle. And we're all called to tell that story. The third thing that we have in common with David uh, Ring is this. Is that we all throw broken things away. You know what he was talking about, right? He was talking about people. He's like, man, somebody threw me away. Like a whole group of people walked by me and all they saw was the wreckage. They saw garbage and they just said, man, this isn't worth anything. And they threw him away so much so that he believed he wasn't worth anything. He tried to take the life away that God had given him. I bet somebody in here, I bet all of us in here if we're honest, remembers the time where somebody threw us away. And I bet if we went and put a list together, there'd be a list of people that, because of our brokenness and their brokenness, we've thrown them away. We all have that in common. But I want to let you know that if you matter to God, that these relationships that have been thrown away in our lives... One's thrown away in mine and yours. Those people matter to God. They matter to God. Now, we may have some emotional things tied to those broken relationships, but here's the truth. God loves them too. And they're broken just like us. And the last thing I would say that we have in common with, um, with David uh, that we saw here in the video would be that God uses broken things doesn't have to be perfect. God uses broken things. If you look all throughout the scriptures, and I want you to turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 5, he uses broken things outside of God, Jesus, and the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. If you look at every man, woman, and child in here, what do they have in common? They're all broken. They all need Jesus. They're all desperate for a Savior. And when they submit and surrender and make Christ first and their second, God does this redeeming work in their lives. And I just want you to see this moment where, uh, where Peter meets Jesus or has a conversation with him for the first time. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. It says, One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the Sea of Galilee, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, 
He saw, Jesus saw at the water's edge two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. Now he got into one of the boats belonging to Simon, and he asked Simon to put out a little bit from shore, and then he sat down and taught the people far from the boat. When he had finished speaking uh, to the people, he said to Simon, why don't you put out into the deeper water and let down the nets for a catch? Well, Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I'll let down the nets. Because you say so. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. That's a good day of fishing. But here's what I love. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees in a sinking boat. And he said, go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. Go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. What Peter's saying in that moment is I'm broken. I'm a liar. I'm a cheater. I'm a wretch. Like, I don't know that you're Jesus, and I don't know that you're the Messiah yet, but I've never seen anything like this before, and I'm not worthy to be in your presence. I'm broken. I'm sinful. You better get away from me. And how does Jesus respond? He doesn't respond with, hey, you should get out of here. Hey, thanks for filling in some of the blanks for me. Anybody else I can use in here? No, he says, all right, if you think catching fish is cool, I'm going to teach you to be a fisher of men. I'm going to teach you to be a fisher of men. You see, Jesus doesn't tell Peter to get away. He invites Peter to be as part of something better. And now Peter's got this big decision to make. Lord, get away from me. I'm sinful. I'm all this. I'm all this. And Jesus extends an invitation. Follow me. Yeah, I'm broken. I'm all this stuff. Yeah, but I can repurpose that. I use broken things. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So they pulled their boats up on shore. And what did they do? They left everything. And they followed him. There's an important lesson for us in this deal. Our limitations don't bother God. He just wants to know, can I use what you have? Like your past doesn't limit what God can do in your future if you'll surrender your life to him, if you'll give him your life. Like he's not worried about all this past stuff. He's just asking, hey, can I use it? Like David could have, David Ring here could have said, man, I can't speak good. I can't do this well. And God's just saying, David, can I use it? I'm not worried about your limitations. He could have looked at Peter and he's like, hey, I'm not worried about what you think you can or can't do. Your limitations don't bother me. Can I have it? And that's the question for each and every one of us today because we all got brokenness. We all got our stuff. We all got limitations. The question for each and every one of us today is, can God use it? Because look at what he does when he has it. He does miracles that bless other people's lives. You have a gift. You have a life, and that's the gift. And God loves you. Can he have your life? Can he use your life? Will you let him repurpose it? Over the past seven weeks, we've been just asking a real simple question. And the question has been, where are you serving? Where are you serving? Because you have something that God can use to bless somebody else. In a second, up on the screen is going to come a URL. It's going to uh, just a just a feed, and I think it says uh, hpcc.church.useme. There is a place for you to use your gifts, to use your life, man. Let God use you. I'll close with this. It's somewhere here. Here we go. The miraculous works of God outperform our limited offerings to him. If you recount through some of the moments in Jesus' earthly ministry, what you see is he turned water, he turned water into wine. He turned water into wine. They gave him water. He came out in this wedding celebration with the best wine that they'd had. 
on a hillside where over 5,000 people are sitting under Jesus' teaching who are hungry. A little boy offered Jesus five loaves and two fish, and Jesus fed all of them until they were completely full. The miraculous works of God outperform what we offer him. And the same is true with each and, each and every one of our lives. He just wants to know, can he use your life? Can he use it? You give him your life. Let him transform it. And as that offering, he'll do miraculous works that outperform what you have to offer. And what will we all say? God is good. Let me pray for us. Lord God, thanks so much for today. Uh, thanks for a chance to uh, see how you use broken things. I want to say thanks for using our lives, and I pray that we would live in such a way that people would see you. In Jesus' name, amen.